Okay, welcome brothers and sisters in the faith to another episode of the Logos, a Bible study program brought to you by the Assembly of Yahushua. Our topic for today is why is Yahushua called Emmanuel? Now, before we go ahead and proceed to our study, let us first offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and gracious Father Yahuwah, thank you for giving us life and strength. Thank you for the hope that we have through the sacrifice of your son, our Mashiach Yahushua. Our King Yahushua, we say and praise you because we firmly believe that you are the one through whom Yahuwah reconciles us. Please be with us today in the study that we're going to undertake. Manifest yourself in our minds and our hearts, and may you give us the comfort and the strength we need. Father, please forgive all our sins. Be with us this day and always, for we ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters in the faith, we are truly happy to have you join us once again to study his words and his commands. Our topic for today in the Logos is the name given to our King Yahushua, which happens to be Emmanuel. Because when we look at the angel's instruction to Joseph and to Mary in the book of Matthew 1, 21 to 23, we have the following, and he will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahushua, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So the Bible tells us that the name to be given to the son, who is the son of God, the savior of mankind, is Yahushua. However, in verse 23, the Bible tells us about a prophecy and that he, the son of God, Yahushua HaMashiach himself, will also be called by the name Emmanuel, and so he is to be called Yahushua, and it seems that he is also going to be called Emmanuel. Now, when we think about this passage of scripture, it does kind of strike us a bit odd because none of the disciples really called him Emmanuel. I don't think this was ever, an, there was ever an account in the Bible where the disciples went to cast out demons in the name of Emmanuel. Right? When they cast out demons, we cast you out in the name of Yahushua. When they baptized, it wasn't in the name Emmanuel. When they preached, it was not in the name Emmanuel. When they prayed, it was not in the name Emmanuel. It was not in the name of Yahushua. And so we know that the real name, the actual name, the personal name is Yahushua. But why is he also going to be known or to be called Emmanuel. Well, we should actually not be surprised because the name given to our King Yahushua is Yahushua, but also he has other designation names, names that depict his character and the unique work he is to do. And so when we look at Yahushua, which means Yahuwah saves for the salvation work to be carried out through Yahushua, there are different aspects of Yahushua's work that is depicted by other names, by other uh, designations. For example, Yahushua is not only to be called Emmanuel. In the book of Isaiah 9, verse 6, it also tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, this is in the New King James Version. When we read it in a different translation, which was translated by the Jews, this is what we find. It actually uh, it gives more light into this name. It's actually the name Pele Yoes El Gibor Abi Adsar Shalom. And so the king to be born, the son of God to be born, is to be given this name, Pele Yoes El Gibor Abi Adsar Shalom. Shalom. Now, of course, Yahushua was never actually literally called that. The disciples did not go and say to him, Lord, Peleos El Gibor Abi Ansar, Shalom. But he is to be called that 
according to prophecy, which means wonderful in counsel is God the mighty, the everlasting father, the ruler of peace. Not only that, in the book of Jeremiah, the Bible tells us, behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, uh, says Yahuwah, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness, a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment, righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now, this is his name by which he will be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. And so here in Jeremiah, it again prophesies about a branch and we know who he is, a king who will reign and prosper. This is referring to none other than King Yahushua. But the prophecy says, now this is his name by which he will be called, Yahuwah, our righteousness. And so that's another name by which Yahushua is going to be called. In Zechariah, we have another name. Then speak to him, saying, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, saying, behold, the man whose name is the branch from his place, he shall branch out and he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. Yes, he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule on his throne. So he shall be a priest on his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. And so here we have another name to be given to Messiah. He is to be called the branch. The name given to this man is the branch. And in the New Testament, when Yahushua returns to earth, he's also known as with another given name. In Revelation 19, 11 and 13, now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. We know who this is, none other than our King Yahushua. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So here's another name given to our King Yahushua. So we know his personal name, his legal name, the name by which he is to be identified with fully, is Yahushua, but he also has other designation names or designated names by which he is to be called. Now, what's the purpose of these other names? When we look, for example, in Matthew 1, 21 to 23, the Greek word used for name is onoma, and the word onoma, well, it can refer to one's proper name or one's personal name, but the definition of onoma can also mean other things, like what the name covers, the excellences of that name, the authority or the character of that name, what makes the person unique who is called by that name. So we have other uses for onoma in, you know, instead of just being the personal actual name of the person being identified by that onoma or name. And so we have to let, look at the context to determine is it the personal name, his actual name, or is it a name or a designation to basically express his work? Because in Hebrew and Greek, the name expresses the work attached to the person identified by that name. So, and also, so this is the Greek. In Hebrew, it's the same thing. For example, when he is called the branch or his name is the branch, it is the Hebrew word sem which means reputation, fame, glory, a mark or a memorial of individuality, what makes him unique. Also, by implication, honor, authority, character. And so what we have in combination of onama and sem, when we look at the names used in scripture, it's referring not just to the personal name, right? But also it is indicative of the work that is uniquely attributed to the people identified by the names. So the other names of Yahushua serve to express the authority and unique work attributed to him. In other words, I mean, I wanna say this kind of loosely, but it's like a nickname, but in Hebrew and Greek, it's deeper than that. And so sometimes, for example, 
just so that we can kind of get a grasp on the meaning of names in Hebrew. Um, for example, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, we know him to be an NBA basketball player. That's his given name, right? That's his legal name. That's his identified name. But he also has other quote unquote nicknames, names by which he's also identified with, right? For example, he's called Mike, Air Jordan, his Airness, Black Cat, Mr. Jude, Goat. And so all these are aspects of his name because it's indicative of something that is uniquely him or something that fits his character or accomplishments or attributes. He's called Mr. June because he always wins championships, for example, right? And so we have the name that is associated with his actual name, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And it doesn't mean that his actual name is Mike or Air Jordan or Mr. June. You're not going to get a driver's license that says his airness on it, right? It's going to say his actual name. So Yahushua, his name is Yahushua. We know it means Yahuwah saves. That's the ultimate identity of Yahushua. Yahuwah will save through Yahushua. And to get this done so that salvation can be fulfilled, it means Yahushua is going to do work. And so the different aspects of the work that Yahushua will do to bring about the full effect and the full fulfillment of salvation is going to be expressed in different other names. You get it? So Yahushua, Yahuwah will say, how will Yahuwah say? And so he is also called the word of God because the word of God is the plan of God for the reconciliation of man, bringing them back to God. We talked about that in one of our episodes. He's also called the branch because he's going to branch out in other words, he is going to include other nations, not just Israel, but other nations will also be included to be a covenant people of God. And he's called Wonderful in Council, God the Mighty, because he is going to be given the government and authority in heaven and on earth. He is also called Emmanuel, which is what we're going to talk about today. And so we can see that these other names are indicative of the specific works that is included in the global work of salvation. So Yahushua is Yahuwah's work of salvation. Yahuwah's, uh, Yahushua is Yahuwah saves. But all these other names, of all these other callings of our King Yahushua represent specific works of our King. And of course, we talk, we're going to talk about Emmanuel. This is why when we, you look at Matthew 1, 21 to 23, it mentions to us the meaning of the name Yahushua. He is to be called Yahushua because he will save his people from their sins. Do you know what that work is? Remember, Yahuwah, Yahushua means Yahuwah saves, and so Yahuwah will begin the work of salvation by a, a sacrificial act. In the book of 1 John, which we talked about before, what is a sacrificial act? The sacrifice of his son, the son, the sacrifice of his life. And so what is this indicative of? It's the work of redemption. And so that kind of kicks off the work of salvation that is started by our king, Yahushua, when he was sacrificed and when he sacrificed himself. But the, the work of salvation doesn't end with redemption. It's ongoing. What do we call that work? Restoration. Do you see restoration? Yep, it's right there. He shall call his name Emmanuel because the name Emmanuel means what? God with us. And so what was initiated was redemption. So redemption is the initiating factor, the initiating work of salvation, but it's going to be completed when God will fight with us. This is called restoration right now Yahuwah God is not fully with us because we still live in this physical body and Yahuwah was in heaven we are on earth there's no reconciliation yet between heaven and earth and so the, pro the process of restoration is ongoing the purpose of redemption is to ultimately have God with us 
God being with us is an ongoing work of progressive restoration. And so we're going to look at that progressive work of restoration that is expressive of the name Emmanuel. And so when we think of Emmanuel, we think of God's work culminating in God being with man. We're going to look at that today. And so we know from the very beginning, it's been the intent and purpose of God that all of creation, because the Bible says God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. So all of creation was created for the purpose of mediation by Yahushua. It is through Yahushua that we can belong to God. It is through Yahushua that God can be with us. That's why his name is Emmanuel. And so when Yahushua was created, his purpose was to bring us to the Father. Yahuwah wants to raise a family, but for Yahuwah to bring people to himself in his own household, it requires the sacrifice of our king, Yahusha. He already done that. Yahuwah has already given up his son, but now he's continuing the work of restoration, culminating in Yahuwah bringing us to heaven where he is. So how can uh, Yahusha be our Emmanuel? How can he be Emmanuel insofar as God is with us. So there are different levels of God being with us as indicated by the name Emmanuel. One is in Matthew 1, 21 to 23, when the Bible tells us um, that they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Matthew tells us where he got this from. It's actually through the prophet because he mentions so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Do you know who the prophet is that he was referring to there? Do you know what specific prophecy uh, Matthew was citing and referencing that led to the name Emmanuel? Who is the prophet? Isaiah. Remember Isaiah's prophet, I mean prophecy? Isaiah 7 verse 14, then the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So that's where Emmanuel comes from. First time it's used is in Isaiah. And Isaiah was given this name Emmanuel as a sign because there was a problem during the days of Judah. Remember, people of Israel was a kingdom, right? And then the kingdom split up. Uh, for, there was a kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. And the kingdom of Judah, although it was smaller, it was in that kingdom where we find Jerusalem. It's in that kingdom where we find the dynasty of David. This is, and so that's Judah. And so when we think that between Judah and Israel, Judah is going to last longer than Israel, because ever since Israel became a kingdom, all of its kings were bad. <laughs> all of them were evil. When you go to Judah, there were some kings, a lot of them are bad too, but there were some kings who were good. Okay. Uh, so Judah remained longer as a kingdom when compared to Israel. But Isaiah, as a prophet, he prophesied against Israel. He also prophesied to Judah and said to Judah, you got to get your act straight. If you're not going to repent and follow Yahuwah, you're going to be you're going to end up like Israel. And so the prophet Isaiah, he was speaking to both houses and he was speaking repentance. Return to Yahuwah or you're going to fall. Now here a sign was given and the sign is a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And his name was to be called Emmanuel. What was the purpose of the sign? You see something happened. Uh, which brought fear and trembling the heart of the king of Judah. In Isaiah 7, 1 to 2, when Ahaz, son of Jotham and grandson of Uzziah, was king of Judah. I want to pause there for a while. We have Judah. We have Israel. Who was the king of Judah? His name is Ahaz. So King Ahaz was the king of Judah at this time. And when King Ahaz was the king of Judah... There were two forces that aligned to work against him. Who were they? Uh, King Rezin of Syria and 
Pekah, son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, set out to attack Jerusalem. And so here we have the king of Israel, their own brothers, right? They align with the king of Syria to attack Jerusalem. Can you imagine that? However, they were unable to carry out their plan. The news had come to the royal court of Judah. Syria is allied with Israel against us. So the hearts of the king and his people trembled with fear like trees shaking in a storm. So this was a great tribulation for the people of Judah, right? Because your own brothers betrays you, sides with Syria, and they're going to work together to destroy you. And so this brought fear, this brought trembling the heart of the people of Judah. And so what does Yahuwah do in response? In Isaiah 7, 3 to 4, then Yahuwah said to Isaiah, take your son, oh boy, it's a, hard, it's a tough name. Take your son, Shir Jashub, and go out to meet King Ahaz. You will find him at the end of the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool near the road leading to the field where cloth, where cloth is washed. Tell him to stop worrying. Tell him he doesn't need to fear the fierce anger of those two burned out embers, King Rezin of Syria and Pekah son of Ramaliah. Here's Yahuwah. He's obviously not trembling. <laughs> He's telling Isaiah, go meet King Ahaz. Tell King Ahaz, don't worry. He doesn't need to fear. I mean, it's kind of natural to expect King Ahaz to be afraid, to worry, right? We too, if we were in his position, would probably trembling in our knees and we're going to have this fear in our hearts. Yahuwah knows us. Yahuwah knows the human condition. And so he sends a message. And I like the message. You can kind of sense the sense of humor of Yahuwah. He says, don't tell him to stop worrying. Tell him he doesn't need to fear the fierce anger what does he call those two kings? <laughs> Burned out embers. That's kind of funny, isn't it? And so Yahuwah tells uh, King of Ahaz, don't worry. Uh, don't be afraid because he's going to do something. Seven, five to six. Yes, the kings of Syria and Israel are plotting against him, saying we will attack Judah and capture it for ourselves. Then we will install the son of Tabil as Judah's king. So Yahuwah knows what's going on. And so, beloved brethren, I think this is a good place to kind of segue a little bit. As human beings, when we face problems and we encounter troubles that bring fear and cause us to worry, sometimes we think maybe Yahuwah doesn't know what's happening in my life. Yahuwah knows all things. God knows all things. Here is Ahaz. He's troubled. He's afraid. Yahuwah knows that. And Yahuwah even knows something that the king doesn't know, right? So he's telling him, look, I know all things. I know what's happening. And so you can trust me. I know what to do. And so don't worry. Don't be afraid. So Yehovah tells, um, let's uh, the king know this is what they're planning to do. They're going to obviously attack you. And they're going to install the son of Tabil as Judah's king. But this is what sovereign Yehovah says. And so after Yehovah says, okay, this is their plan. But this is what I'm going to do. What matters is what Yahuwah chooses to do, right? And so this is what he says. This invasion will never happen. It will never take place. For Syria is no stronger than its capital, Damascus. And Damascus is no stronger than its king, Rezin. As for Israel, within 65 years, it will be crushed and completely destroyed. Israel is no stronger than its capital, Samaria. And Samaria is no stronger than its king, Pekah, son of Remaliah. Unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. And so here's Yahuwah. He's telling King Ahaz, there's no reason for you to be afraid, no reason for you to worry, because this invasion is never going to happen, because the kings are weak. But for this to be fulfilled, you need to have faith. And so he's telling Ahaz, you need to have faith in what Yahuwah says. Because what Yahuwah is saying here is in 65 years, it will be crushed. 
and completely destroyed. I mean, I don't know if Ahaz can live that long, right? But he's telling Ahaz, you need to have faith in me. You need to have faith in my word. And so Yahuwah knows the human condition. Maybe this is not enough for Ahaz. Maybe he's still troubled. Maybe he's still afraid. He's still worried. And so what does Yahuwah do? Later, Yahuwah sent this message to King Ahaz. Ask Yahuwah your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want. As high as heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test Yahuwah like that. Then Isaiah said, listen, listen well. You royal family of David, isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? And so Ahaz receives a message from Yahuwah. Yahuwah is basically telling Ahaz, I want you to be firm in your faith. And so this is what I want you to do. He tells Ahaz, ask Yahuwah your God for a sign of a confirmation. That's the first command. The second command, make it as difficult as you want. And so this is not a suggestion, it's a command. But what does Ahaz say? Ahaz refuses. And he even sounds pretty pious, right? I don't want to test Yahuwah. But beloved brethren, Yahuwah was the one who gave the command. <laughs> and you refuse the command of Yahuwah? Yahuwah himself is saying, I want you to ask me for a sign, number one. Number two, make it as difficult as you can. Make it as difficult as you want. How difficult? As high as the heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. And so Yahuwah wants to establish a sign that will be so magnificent, so wonderful, so awesome, only Yahuwah can pull it off. And because of this, it will assure you of strong faith, right? But he says no. <laughs> and so pro the prophet Isaiah kind of gets upset. Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? And so because of this, because he did not ask for, he, he did not ask for a sign, what does Yahuwah do? Yahuwah was the one who made a sign. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a son. So the one who chooses a sign is who? Yahuwah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so that was the sign. A virgin will give birth and his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And what is the purpose of the sign? What will it mean when this Emmanuel is to be born. Isaiah 7, 15 and 16. By the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. For before the child is that old, the lands of the two kings you fear so much will both be deserted. And so this is what happened in the history of Ahaz. And so what he feared was not fulfilled. Because if you read Isaiah 8 and then Isaiah 9, you will see that what Yahuwah said came true. And so what we find here is a typology, right? Because it wasn't fully fulfilled. I mean, it wasn't fully fulfilled until later on. And you can see that in Isaiah chapter 8 and 9, speaking of a future fulfillment as well. But the sign is given. A virgin gives birth. And the, the one birth is to be called Emmanuel, God with them. And so the purpose of Emmanuel is to give assurance, to give faith, strength of faith for the people of Judah so that they will not be afraid, they will not be troubled, okay? And so that's the purpose of Emmanuel. If God is with us, it doesn't matter what we're facing, it doesn't matter if there are things that cause people to be afraid. If God is with us, then we can overcome the fear. And this is what often we find in Scripture, right? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, uh, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you 
with my righteous right hand. Apostle Paul says, do not be afraid because God is with us. If God is with us, who can be against us? And so when we are assured God is with us, then we can overcome that fear. And so that's one of the purposes of Emmanuel, to have God with us so that we can overcome the fear. But how are we assured that God is with us? Through Yahushua. That's why his name is Emmanuel. And so Matthew tells us he is to be called Emmanuel because Yahushua and his ministry will assure us that God is with us. How can we know this? Let's read the book of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that would be us. If we belong to Yahushua, if we are in him, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Yahushua Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So the Bible tells us if there are those who are in Christ, how can we be in Christ? When we are created anew in Yahushua through baptism. When we're baptized, we are put to death, the old self. We emerge from the water of baptism, a new creation in Christ, Yahushua. If we are in Christ because of that new creation in Yahushua, we have been reconciled to who? To God. And so we have the message and the word and the ministry of reconciliation. And so we who belong to Yahushua, we who have faith in our King Yahushua, we are to be ambassadors for him. In other words, we are to preach and proclaim all about Yahuwah and Yahushua. As so God, we're pleading through us, we implore your Christ to be happy, you reconcile to God. And so because of our King Yahushua, God is with us because Yahushua reconciled us to God. I mean, what caused us to be separated from God in the first place? Sin. When Yahushua became the sacrifice for our sin, what happened to that sin? It's been removed. When that barrier was removed, what happened to us? We were brought near. We were reconciled. So Yahushua reconciled us to God so that he can be with us in times of fear and trouble. So just as the people of Judah during the days of Ahaz faced trouble and also fearsome events, Yahuwah God being with them, Yahuwah God can also be with us today when we face many problems in our life. How also can Yahusha be Emmanuel or God with us? So God can be with us because he reconciled, because Yahusha reconciled us with himself. So we can find peace that surpasses all our understanding in Yahusha. But how, how also is Emmanuel manifested in our life? Let's read Hebrews 10, 19, and 20. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Yahushua. By his death, Yahushua opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. And so in the Old Testament, there was a barrier between God and human beings. And so to kind of offset this barrier and to allow for Yahuwah's presence to be in, amongst the people, there was a day of atonement. And the high priest would enter the most holy place. And for that moment in time, Yahuwah would forgive all of Israel, national forgiveness. But it was only limited to the high priest. The high priest is the only one who, could, who can enter the most holy place. But because of what Yahushua did, because of his sacrifice, because of his blood, what were we permitted to do? Enter into the most holy place to enter right into the presence of God. God with us. Where? In the most holy place. And so that is also a fulfillment of 
Emmanuel. And so Emmanuel for us means God is with us in times of trouble because we were reconciled to him. We can also enter into his presence to the most holy place in worship. But not only that, look at this, First John chapter 4, 10 and 15. This is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. All who declare that Yahushua is the son of God have God living in them. And they live in God. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And so now the Bible is telling us through the death, sacrifice, and the blood of our King Yahushua, we will reconcile to God, right? Through the blood of our King Yahushua, we can enter the most holy place and be in the presence of God. Now Apostle John takes it a step further. You see that? Not only can we step into the presence of God, God can live in us. How? When we declare that Yahushua is the Son of God, when we live in love. So Apostle John is telling us, look, if you declare that Yahushua is the Son of God, in other words, we profess our faith in Him, okay? And that we live in love, who is going to live in us? God. And so that's another manifest manifestation of Emmanuel. Do you see that? And so when we look at Emmanuel, Yahushua is reconciled with us, or has recon Yahushua reconciled us to God because of the sacrifice. So in times of trouble, in times of problems, Yahuwah can be with us and give us peace so we can overcome you know, the fear and the worries. Not only that, we can step into the presence of God. Not only that, God himself can be in us and so these are all different manifestations of what it means to be Emmanuel for God to be in us but it's not yet finished what else the book of Revelation 22 not 21 rather 1 to 4 now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away also there was no more sea then I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And so the Bible tells us that the work of restoration is not yet fully complete. It's not yet complete. Why? Because even though we can enter the presence of Yahuwah, even though God can be with us, we still have this fleshly body, earthly body. Bible tells us because of your earthly body, you cannot dwell in heaven. It has to be changed first. Our human bodies cannot withstand the glory of God in heaven. So it has to be changed. This is why when Moses had that face-to-face -face with God in Mount Sinai, it wasn't really face-to-face. It was more the backside of God. In other words, human beings like Moses, human beings like us, we cannot withstand the full glory of God. This is why even though we can step into the presence of God, and even though God can be in us, it's not yet fully, fully manifested. And so when we get to heaven, when heaven and earth reconcile, because there's going to be a new earth and a new heaven, and it's only through this new earth that heaven can be brought to earth, when that happens, the full reconciliation work of Yahushua is going to be fulfilled. And in that full reconciliation effort, that full reconciliation work, we have full restoration. Because who's going to dwell with us and dwell amongst us? Yahuwah himself. And when Yahuwah dwells, makes his dwelling place among men, the Bible says, no longer will there be a curse upon anything for the throne of God. And of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face. Not even Moses was able to do that. He saw the backside of God from far away, hidden in the crevice of a rock. Because he could not withstand the full glory of God. Now we will see his face. So not only 
is Yahuwah, not only will we enter the presence of Yahuwah and Yahuwah will live in us, we will see his face. We will be able to behold his glory at a much, much deeper and more profound and more powerful way. When? When heaven is reconciled to earth. You see, Yahusha reconciles heaven and earth, reconciles God and mankind according to the Logos, the word of God, so that by the name Yahusha, which is redemption, the sacrificial love of God, can bring about Emmanuel, the full manifestation of God's presence in our life. And so how can Yahusha be Emmanuel, God with us? By his blood, he's reconciled us so that God can be with us during times of trouble. Because of his blood, Yahushua has allowed us to enter the most holy place to be in the presence of God. By his blood, yeah, uh, we are allowed to have God live in us, or God can now live in us because of his blood, because of the, the, word, the blood of our King Yahushua. Reconciliation between heaven and earth will take place, and we will see the face of Abba. Do you see the common denominator? What enables us? To have God be with us in a greater and greater way. From glory to glory to glory. What enables us to feel the meaning of Emmanuel? What enables us so that we can experience God with us? It is the, the name Yahushua, right? It is the name of our King Yahushua, Yahushua meaning Yahuwah sacrificing his son so that he can be our savior. And how great a sign is that? How great a sign is Emmanuel? How great a sign is the sacrifice of our King Yahushua? Remember what the Yahuwah asked he has to do in times of his deepest trouble and worry? He said, ask me for a difficult sign, the most difficult sign you can think of. So it, it can be as high as heaven or deep as the place of the dead. You know what Yahuwah was telling us here? The greatest sign that we can ever hope for, to be assured of the presence of Abba, who is it? Emmanuel. <laughs> Yahushua himself. That's the greatest sign, beloved brethren. The fact that Yahuwah sent Yahushua assures us God is with us. Why? Because of the sacrifice of our King Yahushua. That's why his name, his actual name is Yahushua. Because without the sacrificial love of Yahuwah, without the sacrificial love of created love. By love, we can have God with us. It was not that we love God, but God loved us first. He sent his son even though we're sinners, even though we were enemies. And so because of that, we are assured of the presence of Yahuwah even now. And we have the hope in the future when heaven and earth are reconciled. We will be with Yahuwah in his home forevermore to witness the glory face of our father Yahuwah. But here on earth, we can count on Yahuwah being with us because of our king Yahusha. And so in the final passage of our studies, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. With a resounding yes. And through Christ our amen. Which means yes. Ascends to God. For his glory. It is God who enables us. Along with you. To stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us. Beloved brethren. While we're waiting for Yahuwah. To fully restore all things. We are still here on earth. But while we are on earth. We can stand firm. Even when the, the earth collapses. Even when there are fe fearful signs and events in our life, we can still stand firm. Why? Because God is with us. And when God is with us, the Bible says he will enable us. You see, God is not only with us now, 
is in us so that we can be enabled. What does it mean that we can be enabled so that we can stand firm, so that we can overcome all things because the promises of God, his strength, his fellowship, his presence, his power is given to us because we belong to who? Yahusha. In Yahusha, we have the yes and the amen to all the promises of our father, Yahuwah. This is why when we call upon the name Yahusha, we can expect the manifestation of Emmanuel. What does that mean? God with us. That is our lesson. Let us stand and we shall pray together. Almighty and merciful Father, thank you so much because you understand us. You know our weaknesses. You know about our troubles and our problems on this earth which is soon to collapse and fall, which is to be created anew. We know, Father, many of us will face problems of different kinds. Some will be sick. Some will go through hardship and other forms of tribulation in life. Some will be betrayed by close friends and loved ones. And Father, during these times in our life, we seek your presence. Thank you. For you have given a name to your beloved son. The name Emmanuel. And so even now we can expect that you will be in us. To enable us so that we can stand firm. Yahuwah, thank you so much. You gave us this great sign. You yourself gave this sign. That sign of your beloved son. Yahushua, thank you so much. You are the manifestation of love, a type of love that can only be described as sacrificial. Yahushua, we turn to you, the initiator and finisher of our faith. Because of your sacrifice, because of your shed blood, we have been reconciled with Abba. May the peace of Abba be in us now. May you teach us to walk into his presence Teach us to live in your love that he might dwell and you as well in our life. We look forward to that day when you will transform our bodies. As we wait, help us to endure. But we can only endure when you give us the strength to stand firm. Father, thank you for your gift. Thank you for this privilege. Help us to focus on you, to think of heaven, to think of that day when we shall be with you forevermore. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers. We ask and beg all things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, beloved brethren, thank you so much for attending our Bible study for uh, tonight. Uh, before we go, just a few reminders. We have our Tagalog, uh, BQA, Tagalog Bible Questions and Answers uh, for January 20, Saturday at 10 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Papalakayin po natin, totoo ba na kailangan umanib sa Iglesia ni Cristo para maligtas? This is available for uh, Facebook and YouTube Live as well. Also, we have our in-person worship service and Bible Based Wellbeing Seminar. This will be held in Edgewood, Washington, February 17, which will be Saturday. There will be two events. First, we have worship service at 10 a.m., and then afterwards, we'll have a short break. And after the break, we're going to proceed at 1 p.m. to have the Bible-based well-being seminar. Again, this is for Saturday, February 17. This will be in person. So we do hope those who are within the vicinity um, will, can make the travel uh, to join us in person. We'd love to have you be there with us. Um, but of course, for those who will not be able to, which is, I think, for the vast majority of us, you can still participate via Zoom, uh, Facebook, so that we can be together live nonetheless. So again, this is for February 17, 2024. That is all. May Yahuwah Abba and Yahusha HaMashiach bless all of us.